We are on live TV, like right now. You can tell from my Twitch. What? what? Now. Twitch. Now, this means we are right here in the studio talking, interacting like humans should. Should, right? Or are we? Thanks to the rise of ultra-realistic video simulations, mm. it's hard to know the difference between reality and computer-generated fantasy. They'd probably be better than this, though. <laughs> right. Case in point. <laughs> the rise of deepfakes, just like this clip of Morgan Freeman. Make it real. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? I believe anything Morgan said. Coined as synthetic reality, the new era of digital trickery is making everyone question what is real and what is not. Hold me close. We've, oh, always, been, we've always been fake, just to put everyone. Let's get some more. We welcome futurist and <laughs> author is. Michael McQueen. Michael, hello, mate. Break this down for us. What exactly is this synthetic reality? Well, so it's the umbrella term for any content that has been digitally generated using AI. So we're talking images or sounds um, or video footage. So, you know, deep fakes are the most popular version of this. But anyway, that's sort of like that's just the tip of the iceberg with synthetic reality. Just last month, AI was used to actually recreate Val Kilmer's voice, and that was after the actor lost his natural voice that was following throat cancer surgery in 2015. Let's take a listen first to that. Now I can express myself again. I can bring these dreams to you and show you this part of myself once more. A part that was never truly gone. Gosh, that sounds just like him. It's hard to tell what's actually computer generated. Mm. Yeah, and this is the idea really that to, to most of us, you watch these deep fake clips or listen to the audio and it sounds very real and that's the goal. I mean, there are ways to dig into the, to the code and see if something is legitimate or not, but for most of us, we don't do that. I mean, we've seen in the last little while, interestingly, some deep fakes of like, Boris Johnson or Barack Obama or Vladimir Putin. And you know, if people see a clip that backs up what they already think that sort of person would say, they don't check into it. They just share it on Facebook or Instagram. And this is where it gets really difficult ethically. I mean, there are some really positive signs and some great things like the Val Kilmer example, but there are some ethical things we will have to adjust to and I guess grapple with over the next few years. Yeah, let's hit that. Uh, it's not always positive, as you mentioned. A new documentary used AI-generated audio of Anthony Bourdain, who, who passed away, of course, in 2018. Now, in the doco, they didn't tell the viewers. So we've got some ethical issues on this one. Yeah, for sure. And I think what's interesting is this is not a, an isolated case. In mm. fact, I, was, I came across a company a little while ago called respeecher.com. And if they've got enough of your audio files, so you speaking recorded, they can actually extract the elements of that and produce entire clips of you saying things you've never actually said. So literally putting words into your mouth. So like the issues here we've got to grapple with are things like disclosure, like telling people that this is happening. So you're watching or listening to something that that person didn't actually say but also the whole issue of consent. But like, this is happening. I mean, we, in fact, the re-speech of technology was used in some of the Star Wars movies recently. So mm. this is gonna be more a part of daily life for all of us. It's a terrifying concept, wow, isn't it? Really, I mean, really. it's scary enough with what comes out of our actual mouths, let alone <laughs> people putting words into them, Michael. I mean, it's very disturbing. But You've been putting words in my mouth the last few days. Yeah, yeah but you like that. Uh, uh, look, there's actually something even more disturbing, and that's this new service that allows users to undress women in photos using mm. AI. I mean, this is surely a matter of consent. It should be outlawed, shouldn't it? This is, like, yeah. pretty unsettling stuff. Yeah, so right now there's actually a debate in the UK Parliament about outlawing these. So this is actually not new technology. It's called um, nudifier technology. So how's that for a word? Um, so this is not new technology, but it's getting a whole lot more accurate and more compelling, therefore more concerning for all of us. And I think what this shows is actually the importance of regulation when it mm. comes to the whole tech landscape. Because just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should from an ethical or moral mm. standpoint. And I think a great example of that in the last few months has been in Norway. You'll love this. In Norway, social online influence influencers now need to notify their followers if they upload a photo to Instagram or Facebook that has been digitally altered or doctored or touched up. You actually oh. have to alert people. The idea being the issues around body image and mental health are so pronounced in young people, yep. they want to try and address yep. this. So the oh, Kardashians the no longer feature in <laughs> The Kardashians way, and Larry like, Instagram <laughs> coming down immediately. <laughs> uh, virtual YouTubers over there in Japan uh, growing okay. in influence. 1.5 billion views each and every month. Now Netflix is getting on that bandwagon, yeah? 
Well, if the Olympics showed us anything, it's that Japan is still well and truly at the cutting edge of technology, particularly the really quirky forms of technology. And this is a great example of this. So virtual YouTubers or VTubers, which is something we'll hear a lot more about in the next little while. These are not like these are not avatars of real people. These are fully synthetic beings or creations. In fact, one of the most famous of these is one called Kazuna AI. She turned five in June. She's had a very, very busy five years of her like life, if you want to call it that. So she's like, she's a model for Valentino. She has been on the cover of a magazine. She was in like a Japanese tourism board advertisement. My favorite is she actually fronted a concert with a real life human band front row tickets for 150 bucks a seat. So this what? stuff is, there's big money in it. I know, to watch a fake thing perform, right? But this is wow. big money. So so we're seeing Netflix actually at the moment releasing a suite of these, our own characters, they're, they're developing, they'll roll out initially in Asia, yeah. but globally over the next few months wow. as well. The similarities between this segment and the previous ABBA segment mm. are phenomenal. Uh, good to talk to you as always. My pleasure. You Thanks, know, it would team. have been a great way to end that, Michael, revealing he's actually not real. <laughs> Peeling his face off. <laughs> For more insight into future trends and predictions, check out Michael's new book, The New Now. Great book. It's on sale now. The New Now.